So we kick off Lent, and it started just last Wednesday uh, with Ash Wednesday service. Uh, hopefully you're able to either uh, partake in it in person. We had three services, or you're able to watch it online. If you didn't, I would say go back and watch one of them because it's this beautiful invitation and the liturgy will lead you to say, what exactly is Lent all about and why do we even do Ash Wednesday? But one part of Lent that comes and it matches us with so many other Abrahamic faiths or with the other two, Judaism and Islam and Christianity, we all have this season of repentance. It's an integral piece of our growth as Christians, as people of God, is to repent. So the rabbi and I on the show on Friday talked about this, the, the, the similarities between Yom Kippur and the month before Yom Kippur uh, for our Jewish friends, and then Lent, which leads us to Easter, and then, of course, Ramadan with, um, uh, with Islam. This, this time when there's fasting, you're going to fast from something. You can fast from food, you can fast, uh, you can fast from social media, you can fast from gossip, you can fast from whatever is getting in the way. You're going to clear up some real estate, Right? You're going to clear up some real estate in your heart to allow God to really dig through. But the only way that we can do this, those of you heard, is in the Beatitudes today, is that you got to discover where you're broke. Where are you poor? Where are you about to file bankruptcy in your heart? So we're going to take this journey in Lent where we're going to follow the greatest sermon ever told, the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' sermon in Matthew 5 through 7, which is going to lead us during this time where we're going to be able to, to, to really discover where are you today, we're going to start with, where are you broke? I mean, broke is a joke. <laughs> like, you are ready to just say, God, I am so poor here. And I'm not just talking about finances. In order for us to have a, a, a Lent that can really transform and change your heart, it's going to need a lot of honesty, it's going to need some courage, a lot of courage, and it's going to need vulnerability. But welcome to the church. <laughs> the church is a place, you know, as you know, it's not a hotel for, for saints, it's a hospital for sinners. When we come in through these doors, we come in with this, hopefully you feel this, this invitation to really just be truthful for where you're at, how you're feeling about yourself, what's going on inside of your heart. You don't have to come in and, and be your Sunday best. You don't have to put on a, some kind of facade and say, everything's all good. I'm ready to roll. I'm great. I'm just awesome. When really, you know, inside, you're really wrestling with a lot of things or some fears have got the best of you, some guilt that's working with you. You got some relationships that are pretty funky. Uh, you got a diagnosis you're wrestling with. You're worried about your friends. You're worried about your country. You're worried about the world, whatever it is. This is the place where you can bring it so God can then do something with it. If we hide our stuff from God, God says, I don't know what to do with it. You as parents know this. When your kids don't open up to you and they don't tell you about things, you're like, well, I can't help you. <laughs> Until you tell me then I can help you. God's our Heavenly Father. Until you're honest with me and you get real with me, then I can help you. But if you stay back and say, God, I'm good. I'm not ready for that, God. I don't want to repent because that's weird and it has a, it's, a loaded, it's a loaded word, God. I came from a past, a denomination or something that used repentance as a weapon and I ain't, a no. What is repentance? The Greek background of it is just mean to change your mind. That's all that Jesus is saying. That's what John the Baptist was saying. Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Change, be ready to get to a place where you're saying, I've been doing life this way, or I'm trying it this way. I've been trying to do things where I get cynical, where I get bitter, where I get judgmental, and I think of people this way. And I don't think that's making me a healthy and happy person. So I am ready to repent and say, God, forgive me for doing that. I don't think it's helpful. It's causing division between me and my neighbor. And help me so I can make a shift and walk this way towards healthy relationships. But I need to be honest with you, God, and saying, yes, I have been uh, cynical, I have been judgmental, and I, I don't feel good about it, and I'm going to be honest with you, God, so then you can say, okay, I'm repenting, I'm shifting, I'm changing direction towards a new life. Welcome to Lent. So that's not, that, 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 that's not fun, but it does take a lot of courage. It's the moment in your therapy session where you finally start to really open up to your therapist and really get below the surface. And you can see your therapist's eyes go, oh, oh, now we're getting somewhere, right? 
It's the moment where in your small group or your life group or your Bible study where someone finally kind of opens up about something and says, you know, we're really going, my husband and I are going through some rough financial stuff right now. And everyone just goes, oh, we're getting real here. And everyone just leans in and says, let me just be present with you. It's this invitation to go below the surface. It's an invitation to get, talk about the gritty stuff. It's the moment I see it. It's, it's one of the most beautiful moments that I find just as a pastor. But even before uh, at the church I came from in Los Angeles is where you, you, you look across the pew and you see this person who's been coming really quietly to church for months and months and months, just sitting there. You know that something's going on. And then finally, like after the sixth month, they're just a basket full of tears. And you're like, oh. And, and, and they, 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 they're, they're, there's this moment where God has worked on them so much, where they've gone to this trusting relationship with God, and they got in a trusting relationship with the community to just let it all come out. <laughs> like, oh, God, just here it comes, here it comes. It just happens. I see it all the time. It's like popcorn. It's like, oh, someone's having a moment with God. It's beautiful. It really is. I'm not saying, like, I, I, I'm not softening what that person's going through, but it is a release there's a repentance of saying, God, I'm just ready to deal with it. I'm ready to bring my grief, my sorrow, whatever it is, my hatred, just let it all come out. Father Tava talked about this. He came from a real big old church in, in Philly, uh, Good Samaritan. And so it would attract a lot of retired priests and retired pastors from other denominations. So this would be this place where they would go to kind of escape and kind of be unknown so they could just deal with their stuff <laughs> for being in ministry for so long. So they could just sit in the back pew and you would see that after like three, four, five months, just be able to sit there, to not be up in the front, just be in the back. That all of a sudden you just look back and they're like, oh, there they go. <laughs> and they're just a mess, right? Just say, God, I'm going to give it to you. I am poor in spirit. The NRSV translation says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. That's where we start today with the Beatitudes. And I don't want to go any further than just that first Beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Why does Jesus want you to be poor in spirit? Because you invite him in. You say, I need you. I can't make myself rich spiritually. But you can. And, 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 and you get to a place where you're like, God, I, I know you're not going to judge me. So let me just be real with you about what I'm struggling with. Okay, God, I'm just a selfish human being. I'm selfish. I like myself. I love me some me. <laughs> I'll choose me over others. God, I'm going to be real with you. But this is Lent, and I would like to get to a place where I could be more selfless. So I'm going to keep on being honest with you during my morning prayer. I'm going to keep on telling you about my selfishness, and I'm going to keep on being honest about it because I want to work through it. And I'm going to read the Bible, and I'm going to pray to you, and I'm going to bring it up to worship. I'm not going to, like, deny it. I'm not going to stand back and be like, well, everyone is just selfish, or it's just a selfish culture. No, I'm going to be real with you, God. I'm going to be honest about it and maybe find out there's a reason for my selfishness. Maybe there's some insecurities that I have about myself, and so I, I just have to keep on being really arrogant about things because if not then i got to really come to the truth that i really struggle with my own gifts and abilities oh wow god let's go take that walk with you blessed are the poor in spirit because then you say now you god you fill me up <laughs> there's a blessing there jesus is using this 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 old jewish construct which is if you if you do this then you're going to be happy and you will receive this, right? So if you, you are blessed, if you're poor in spirit, so if you be honest about your brokenness, then what will you receive? You will receive the kingdom of God. Get rid of the kingdom on earth that is full with that the moths can destroy. Those treasures will just fall apart and be filled with an everlasting kingdom, a life-giving kingdom, a kingdom that gives you joy, not happiness, where you feel, boy, God, I am filled with you. I am saved by you. The sins, the worst things that I have done have been taken away through you. I understand my salvation better than I ever have been. I used to be owned by my sins, owned by my guilt, owned by my brokenness. No longer, because that cross took it away. And now I get it. And I surrender to you every single morning of this. And wow, what a relief. Thank you, Jesus. The moment as Christians, because this is what makes us Christians, it's different from other religions. This idea that God, it says, give me your worst. 
Give me your worst here on earth. Not like, where are you up there? Here on earth, give it to me. And I'm going to give you this image or this symbol. Put it up there so you don't have to be weighed down by it. Get rid of the guilt. Get rid of the sin. Get rid of this, this horrible idea sometimes you have of yourself, the self-effacing aspect of yourself, these insecurities, these fears, the arrogancy, the, the criticism, things you've done that you're not happy about, things you might have done on the way here to church. That's fine. Now is a better time than ever to be honest and say, yeah, I wasn't happy about that. God, I want to be a better human being. I want to be like you, Jesus. You have the gift of the cross. It's so freeing. If you truly repent, though, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Come to the cross so you can repent to be a better human being. I'm going to give this up, God, this behavior, so I can repent and find a new life over here. Like, I'm giving up Twitter for Lent, right? <laughs> Twitter's not a bad thing. I mean, it can be, but like, but it's a distraction for me. It sure is. It's become a nervous habit for me. I'm afraid to use that digital app that I started using that tells you how many times you open your phone. <laughs> I think it's called, Tracy, you got it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it tells you how many times you open up a certain app. I'm really afraid to tell what, what I, how I've done Twitter. But as I'm in the grocery line, open it up, scan through it. Send around, feeding baby boy. Yeah, start opening it up, scanning through it. What, what, what am I mind doing that? What anxiety am I doing there that I'm just afraid to just be in the moment with my child or at the grocery store line? Give it up, right? There's a surrender with being poor. We don't, we don't have it figured out. We're, when we say that we're poor and we walk in through these doors and say, I'm poor in spirit, God, you're giving God the permission to fill you up with his richness, not yours. So it takes honesty. It takes a, <laughs> it takes a lot of courage takes vulnerability and it takes a, a, a relationship and a trust in God but you have this 40 day awesome journey here at church to explore it so today I want to do something different I, I want to um, for us to spend a little time in prayer and, and, and Pat is going to just guide us um, in some music and you know instead of the creed of us just stating our beliefs um, which is always a good thing, stating what we believe in. Um, Pat is just going to uh, play a song that we all know very well, I Surrender. It just take these three to four minutes just to be present with God. And if something came up for you, something you want to surrender for this Lenten journey, your anger, your impatience, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a behavior you have, a thought that keeps on going through your head that's really limiting you. If you see something that might be standing in between you and being in a closer relationship with God, lift it up. Just bring God in. Don't hide it from God. Just be real with Him. And just say, God, just come into this and lead me on this Lenten journey. And just surrender it. Just focus prayer right now. If nothing comes up, that's fine. Just sit in silence and allow the words to wash over you. And just surrender. God's got you.